Um, all right, in this example, um, we're given a uh, linear function formula. And um, this linear function formula uh, has a practical application uh, because it can be used to uh, determine uh, the average apartment rent, uh, which we're um, referring to y, um, which we're referring to as y in this example. Uh, in uh, the city of Houston, Texas, uh, T elapsed years uh, after the year 2000. So um, our input quantity is uh, elapsed years uh, denoted by our input variable T, and the output quantity is um, the average apartment rent uh, in Houston, and that's denoted by the output variable Y. And uh, what we want to do in this example is uh, find the Y-intercept of this uh, function and then interpret that um, in a practical context. Um, so because this is a linear function, um, it's fairly straightforward uh, to determine the y-intercept, because remember in a linear function, uh, the y-intercept is always going to be just the constant uh, in the linear function formula. Remember, a linear function formula uh, is always of the form uh, coefficient, which is the slope, uh, times the um, input variable, and then uh, plus or minus some uh, constant. Uh, so in this case, uh, we can easily identify the constant. Uh, that's uh, 600 in this linear function formula. And so that tells us that the um, y-intercept of, um, of this line, uh, which is um, usually denoted by the uh, letter B, uh, is equal to uh, 600. So um, the y-intercept, uh, uh, of course, has an important geometric interpretation because that's um, where the graph of a linear function is going to cross the y-axis. But it uh, usually also has uh, useful uh, practical interpretations as well, and that's what we want to explore uh, in this example. Um, now, before we get to that interpretation, so we, we can easily identify the y-intercept to 600, but before we get to the interpretation, um, let me mention that um, it's not hard to find the y-intercept for a function in general, um, not just for a linear function, but for just a, a function uh, in general, it's easy usually to find the y-intercept because that's just the output that corresponds to the input um, zero. So uh, another way to determine uh, um, the y-intercept, uh, which applies to linear functions, but uh, to other functions as well, is to just um, evaluate the function formula uh, at the input uh, 0. So uh, for this particular example, if we calculate f of 0, uh, that would um, uh, give us uh, 15 times 0 plus 600. And of course, um, that first term is going to disappear because of that um, factor of 0. And so we get um, that f of 0 is equal to 600. So there's a second way of identifying the uh, y-intercept of uh, both linear functions, but also functions in general, is to just evaluate the function uh, at the input 0, provided, of course, that, um, that uh, the input 0 is part of the domain of the function. Now, actually, um, evaluating uh, the function at the input 0 to determine the y-intercept uh, uh, is actually helpful in uh, helping us discover the practical interpretation uh, of the y-intercept as well. Um, because remember, in this example, um, <clears throat> the output uh, is the apartment rent in Houston, and uh, input is uh, elapsed years after 2000. So um, if we use an input of 0, what we're referring to here is the apartment rent uh, 0 elapsed years after 2000, or in other words, um, in the year uh, 2000. So what the y-intercept uh, tells us in this example is that in the year 2000, uh, or initially, uh, the apartment rent uh, in the average apartment rent in Houston, Texas uh, was um, $600. So there's our interpretation uh, of the y-intercept, and uh, that comes about by keeping in mind that the y-intercept is the output that matches uh, the input zero. So let's write down um, that interpretation. So um, the average uh, apartment rent um, uh, in Houston um, in 2000, uh, which again corresponds to um, elapsed year zero, uh, was um, $600.